I'm Kelly Murphy Rangate. Welcome to First Responder TV, your public safety source. In each new edition, we'll be giving you valuable information to keep you safe, highlight public safety and fire prevention events, take you on location to first responder training throughout the lake area, and now, here's what's coming up on First Responder TV. Everyone's favorite master of avoiding danger, the LMCC safety expert stops by to give you some important severe weather tips. I'll head up to South Lake Minnetonka Police Department and talk to Police Chief Brian Litzy in this edition of Meet the Chief. Scam Alert. We'll give you an update on scams that have been targeting citizens in the lake area. And we'll highlight some upcoming public safety events and give you some important fire prevention tips in Safety Source. Everyone's favorite master of avoiding danger heads to the National Weather Service in Chanahassen to give you severe weather tips that are very essential for your life. And now it's time for Lake Minnetonka's favorite champion of safety, protector of humankind, and master of avoiding danger, the LCC's safety expert. All right, safety expert, grip it and rip it. <coughs> Ooh, I didn't see that uh, horse over there. Yowzers. Oh, hello. The LMCC safety expert here. It's a beautiful day here in Tonka Bay, Minnesota, near the LMCC forest. And I've got some extremely important severe weather safety tips for you. Now, severe weather can strike at any moment. Damaging winds, hail, severe thunderstorms and tornadoes can wreak havoc this time of year. What, what is that? Is, is that a wind? Is, it, is that a fan? Camera operator, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. Now you're even in the shot. A fan? A fan for wind noise? Well, explain yourself. Right. Enough of that. I don't want to hear this anymore. You are cruising for a bruising, mister. Get that fan out of here. All right, now that's better. Now you need to take severe weather seriously. I'm trying to help these people. Okay, mister, a storm could roll in here at any moment. Wait, wait a minute. Is that a storm cloud? Well, you know what? I think we'll be okay, folks, because I, I don't see any lightning. Oh, oh, great. Now there is lightning and, oh, and some thunder, too. Uh, you know, folks, uh, I think I need to seek shelter immediately. I, I think that tree will uh, be perfect for me, and uh, the old golf club can uh, shield me from the weather. What was that? Oh, you think it's dangerous for me to use this golf club and not? I shouldn't stand on a tree? What do you know, camera operator? Listen, you just you just be quiet. Oh, there's another thunderclap. Uh, you know, folks, uh, I, I need to seek some shelter. So uh, I think what we're going to do is uh, send it to the National Weather Service in Chanhassen, where they're going to have some valuable severe weather safety tips. Oh, you know, OK, I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. What we do here at the Weather Service is we're watching the weather to make sure that we get warnings out so that uh, people can be safe. We issue weather forecasts so that people know what's coming up. If you're prepared, then you're going to be that much more ready to react when we issue the warnings. If you hear the sirens, if you hear the weather radio sound off, if you're prepared, you're that much more ready to get to shelter. If there's a watch, that means that severe weather might happen. Uh, it doesn't mean it's definite. When we issue a warning, that means that there really is a storm out there that has a tornado or has really strong straight line winds or hail that means get to shelter. Sirens are not enough. You need to have some other kind of item that'll let you be aware of what that warning might be. Whether it's your smartphone, whether it's your weather radio, just be aware that you need to have multiple ways of getting that warning. We'll issue warnings for severe thunderstorms. There might not be a tornado, but there could be very strong straight line wind that can cause an awful lot of damage. The first thing with thunderstorms is to remember that there's lightning. And so with lightning, you need to get inside. Get inside a building, get inside a vehicle. Meanwhile, back in the LMCC forest. This is not good, not good at all. It's important for you to have a plan to know what you're gonna do if there is a tornado that's coming your way. The number one thing is to have looked around the house beforehand to figure out where would you go for shelter. So some people will go to the lowest floor. That's really the best place to go to the lowest floor, the interior room. You just need to have a, 
a supply of, of food and water, uh, batteries, flashlights, um, important paperwork, those sort of things. If you're out in a car, especially here in the Twin Cities, what you need to do is find a shelter, run inside a building if you possibly can. If you're caught at the absolute last second, um, then you've got the choice. You can either get out of your car and, and get into a ditch, or you can just stay inside your car, get down on the, on the bottom of the car, the floorboard. The number one thing is don't put yourself in that position. If there's a warning out, don't go driving around somewhere. The main thing is to be aware of the potential of severe weather and have a plan. Figure out what you're going to do if those warnings happen and make sure you have a way of getting those warnings. Again, sirens are not enough. Make sure you have a weather radio. Make sure you have a smartphone. Sign up for some kind of service that'll actually tell you if you're in the area where there's a warning. So make sure you're aware of those warnings and then have a plan if severe weather does strike. Oh, looks like the old uh, safety expert lost that storm cloud. What do you expect from a master of avoiding danger? <laughs> well, I hope you all learned some valuable severe weather safety tips today. I know I sure did. I guess you could say this segment was electrifying. <laughs> Great, another storm cloud. Oh, well, oh, I've got a splitting headache right now. Well, that's gonna do it for this edition of the Expert Safety. Grandma, are the cookies ready yet? <coughs> Coming up next, we're headed to the South Lake Minnetonka Police Department to talk with Police Chief Brian Litzy. More First Responder TV right after this. Walk a straight line, that's ridiculous. You know how hard it is to admit that you've got a problem, that things sometimes seem to be spinning out of control. We know how we sometimes hurt the people we love without realizing it at the time. We know because we've been there. We're Alcoholics Anonymous. If your drinking is affecting your life and family, look us up. We're in the phone book and on the web. Hi, I'm Conservation Officer Scott Staples. Zebra mussels, Eurasian water milfoil, and other invasive species continue to be a threat to our waters, and we need your help to stop their spread. When you trailer your boat, be sure to remove any aquatic plants, mud, or zebra mussels attached to your boat, equipment, and trailer. Drain water from your bait bucket, live well, and boat before leaving the boat landing, and dispose of unwanted live bait in the trash. These simple steps protect our lakes and rivers and can help you avoid a citation. Remember, help stop aquatic hitchhikers. Welcome back to First Responder TV. Joining me today is South Lake Minnetonka Police Chief Brian Litzy. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to have you. We, my first question for you is where you began, where you first joined the South Lake um, Police Department, and where you are now. Absolutely. Untold, untold stories of the police chief. I, I'll go back to, uh, I started out in New Orleans, Minnesota, actually, at the age of 20. I had some college at the time, but wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Unlike some people, they're very focused on their career and they, they knew right out of high school what they wanted to do. And I really didn't know for a while really what I wanted to get into. Uh, I rode along with the local police department where I lived and it seemed like an interesting job and something that I might want to pursue. So I just started testing around and I was fortunate enough at 20 years old to get a job down in New Ulm. I stayed down there about three and a half years and it was a nice place to start, but I kind of had a yearning to come back to this area. And so um, I uh, tested around and had a job offer actually at Fridley and South Lake Minnetonk at the same time. So um, I was more familiar with this area and uh, the department had a really good reputation. And so I accepted the job and 30 some years later, here I still am. Um, I actually started out as a patrol officer like most okay. people do at the entry level. And then I worked my way up into an investigative position, eventually into a sergeant's job, and then a um, uh, more administrative role. And then before I was appointed chief, they appointed me deputy chief, kind of as a transitional role, until I took over as chief. And then um, I took that role over in 1999. Okay, now as chief, you are faced with some challenges, and one of those challenges is how to deal with four separate cities that you cover. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some people look at it, in fact, some of my fellow chiefs say, how can you deal with four different city councils? And how can you deal with all that different politics and stuff going on? But in reality, actually, it works fairly smoothly uh, most of the time. 
Um, basically at budget time is the time that I go before the cities and, um, and they have to approve our, our budget for the year. But once the budget's approved and, um, and that's done, then it comes over to our side, which is under the um, direction and, and uh, the governing board called our coordinating committee, and it's made up of the four mayors. And so for the majority of the time, my role is to report to the four mayors. Um, and uh, it works pretty well. I mean, the mayors uh, usually are very well versed on their communities, um, and in this case right now, very well versed. And um, know a lot about um, the police department. They've taken a lot of time to learn about how we operate and so forth, and it, and it works really well. The relationship has been excellent. Great, that's good to hear. I'm, I can see how that could be challenging in more avenues than one. As chief, tell me one of your most enjoyable experiences being the uh, police chief of the South Lake Minnetonka Police Department. Well, I think overall being chief, for me it's, it's certainly not ego driven or anything like that. What I like most is the ability to affect change and hopefully in a positive way. It gives you more latitude to influence how things are done. Um, and I like to do that through a team approach. I think that every member of the organization has a real vital role to play and that you need to recognize that and to collectively together we're stronger. And so through that team approach, I think you can accomplish a lot more. But I think probably the, the biggest achievement or the most satisfied achievement was um, getting the public safety facility built. Um, it's, I think, a testament to what can be done when everybody works together for the common good. And I think all the stars were aligned just at the right time politically for that to happen. There was a window of opportunity and, and we went for it and it, it has worked out really well. And I think the community as a whole has a tremendous asset here now that they can be proud of. Yes, and I, I agree, being a firefighter, that's <laughs> part Since of that process. Yes. Facility, Everything exactly. was aligned just perfectly. Yes, yes, Very good. Yes. Now, is there any big events coming up for South Lake, um, police related? Well, you know, our big events are in the summertime are the same for the fire department, the community events. So in terms of um, our participation with all those different events, starting with, you know, Art on the Lake and different parades and 4th of July celebrations. We also look forward to the fire department open house where we can, <laughs> we can showcase, you know, what we do too, because, you know, you're nice enough to invite us to that. And uh, you get to meet people in a positive way. And it's just a fun community event. So if I were to take a crystal ball and look into it, can you tell me what you see for the future for South Lake Minnetonka PD in the well, next couple of years? Oh, I think it's much like any, any department faces right now, especially government agency. It's trying to do more with less. Um, we did an um, a internal study a while back um, in terms of a strategic planning, and at that time determined that you know staffing is an issue for us, that we really would like to add some additional personnel to get us up to where we need to be. But with the reality of the way the economy is and so forth right now, that's kind of been put on hold. Um, the good part of the study is they already realize we're doing as much as we can with less. So they're not asking us to do, you know, take anything more away. Mm -hmm. um, on the reverse side, um, it's a little frustrating sometimes being able to provide the coverage we'd like to provide with the people we have. So it's, just, it's always a constant struggle. We've, we've done some things to mitigate that through our community service officer program, through the use of technology. Uh, we have a creative schedule for our patrol division. Um, that's kind of one of a kind, very unique in the area that maximizes the use of our people, I think, the best way possible. Um, so we're always looking for new ways to do things better and more efficiently. But at some time, um, you can only do more with less, and then it becomes less. <laughs> so um, we're kind of at that, that point now. But on the, on the reverse side, um, the communities have been very supportive, and they've been good about funding our organization um, where we can meet the needs of the community. We have um, people within the community that help us out uh, through the Self Lake Minnetonka Crime Fund and other organizations that help uh, through donations. If you look at the uh, extra vehicle we got back there, the four-wheel vehicle back here, that was through all through donations and so yeah. forth, so um, the Polaris Ranger. So we, we try to go outside our traditional funding sources when we need something, much like the fire department, get donations and yeah. things, because the community is really supportive when it comes, with, comes to that. Yep. It's like we do a lot of the same things. Yes, we along, do. Yep. Yes, we do. And a lot of times police and fire overlap, you know, yeah, especially in the area of emergency management. Yep. What is something that people might want to know about you that they don't already know? Well, 
I think most people already know I'm a workaholic, so that if you want to find me, I'm usually here, <laughs> but I do have another life. Um, my fa I'm very lucky to have a very supportive, probably too, too understanding of a wife when it comes to work sometimes, but because um, she understands that sometimes that has to take priority over family, which is not the way you would like it to be, mm -hmm. but because of the position you hold, you have you know, many hats to wear. Um, but I do have, a, I got married a little later in life, um, my first marriage, and it's gone great. We're going on 13 years. Yeah. Um, we have a nine-year-old son, Joshua, and um, I'm coaching Little League again this year. Um, I think he still likes me being coach. <laughs> That'll probably end in a few years where he'll probably dad go sit on the bench. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I also teach part-time down at Mankato State in the law enforcement program, and that's a nice break in terms of it's a way to give back to the community and interact with the, the future people that'll be in law enforcement and have a, a positive, hopefully, impact on, on them as they um, come into the job market. So I've, I've enjoyed that, too. So um, got a lot of stuff going on. Well, thank you so much for thank taking you, time out of your busy great. day yes. to come see us because we know how you busy you are. Too. You're welcome. Okay. We're gonna take a break. First Responder TV will be back in just a moment. Raise your hand if you know the leading cause of death for Minnesota teens. Well, it's not your high school cafeteria food. It's traffic crashes. And what can you do? Buckle up. You've mastered the web and text messaging, but the seatbelt remains a mystery. Think it's uncool? So is your face going through a windshield. So buckle up. Every body, every seat, every time, and live to drive another day. A message from our partners at AAA and the Minnesota Safety Council. For more information on Live to Drive Another Day, visit MyFox9.com. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. The Lake Minnetonka Communications Commission, located in Spring Park, Minnesota, offers free television production classes. You heard it right. Free, free, free. free. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will help bring your idea to the big screen. Why, thank you. We are very friendly and knowledgeable. From studio lighting and nonlinear editing to on location shooting, we'll guide you down the path you need to succeed. Hurry in, folks. An opportunity this good won't last forever. Welcome back to First Responder TV. Scams are a frustrating problem that continue to affect everyone in the community. This next segment, Scam Alert, is to educate the public on some common scams that have been reported to local police departments in the Lake area. West Hennepin Public Safety Department received a report from a citizen in Independence who stated that he received a call from a member of the WHPS department informing him that he had won a large sum of money. The caller indicated that the citizen would have to send him a check in order to collect his sum of money. Be aware, this is a scam. Director Ray McCoy stated, Our department does not and will not call or write a letter to residents advising them that you have won any amount of money. The caller will sound very convincing and will ask you to send them money or cash the enclosed check before you'll receive your winnings. West Hennepin Public Safety cannot emphasize enough how important it is to not send anything to anyone who presents this type of scenario to you. If you receive a call or letter, please contact WHPS at 763-479-0500. Several police departments in the area have been receiving reports of an advertising scam. The suspect enters local businesses and states he works for a major bank chain. He offers them a chance to purchase advertising space on dry erase boards that will be distributed to all bank employees and customers. The suspect collects an amount of money from the businesses and will send them an example of the dry erase boards, saying that these have been distributed to the bank employees. However, Aside from the copies sent to the business, no other dry erase boards are being produced or distributed to any banks. Ask for a business card or corporate ID, and keep or make a copy of it. If you have any questions or would like to report an incident, please contact South Lake Minnetonka Police Department at 952-474-3261. Foreign lottery scams are continuing to happen throughout Minnesota. Individuals will receive a letter or email from a person indicating that they have won a large prize from a foreign lottery, and if you contact them, you will receive a check with your winnings shortly. Within days, an official-looking cashier's check will arrive with instructions to deposit the check in a bank and wire a portion of it to a claims agent to cover taxes and fees. Individuals are told that the check received was only a portion of the winnings and that they must wire back some of the money in order to obtain the entire prize. 
Foreign lotteries are always illegal and no one has ever received their supposed winnings in this scam. It preys on unsuspecting customers who deposit the check and wire the money before the bank discovers the check is fraudulent. Just because the money appears in your account doesn't mean that the check has cleared the bank and is legitimate. No matter how convincing, do not wire money to strangers, especially overseas. Wire transfers, unlike personal checks, cannot be canceled at any time. Once the money goes overseas, it becomes virtually untraceable and you are left to cover the loss with your bank. To report this or any other type of scam, go to www.mnscams.org. When we come back, we'll be highlighting some public safety events and giving you some important fire prevention tips on Safety Source. But up first, we'd like to spotlight a member of the community that goes above and beyond in our segment called Making a Difference. This month, it's 2011 Mount Firefighter of the Year, Andy Drilling. Well, it means a lot. A lot of the people that have won it in the past are very well respected within the department, and I was shocked because um, I feel like I don't do any more than anybody else does up here. We all put in a lot of extra time outside of the calls we make to make the department work, station run, so I really didn't think I was that special, but I was very honored that my peers thought I was, so it was very nice. My grandfather and father were firemen in San Diego where I grew up. Um, it's a full-time department, and I never really thought about being a fireman, but when we moved here to Minnesota about six years ago, I thought, well, it would be a great way to meet people in the community because I know the firefighters are the doers or the people that do things and help people the most so uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I know a little bit what it's about and we'll see if they'll have me and I applied two months after we moved in and within seven months I was hired so it was, it was a good experience and I'm very happy to, to serve the city of Mound and learn what I can to help people. Cable access channels are critical tools for local government. They provide important information about issues, services and programs, as well as local emergencies. They also allow you to watch your local elected officials in action. Through the provision of governmental access channels, our communities are kept informed, educated and entertained. Where else can you get information about your local government? Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local government access channel. Different words describe different people. But in the eyes of the law, there's one that fits us all. Human right number seven. We're all equal before the law. What are human rights? Find out at youthforhumanrights.org. Welcome back to First Responder TV. No matter what time of year it is, there's always tons of fire prevention and public education events going on throughout the Lake community. We would also like to spotlight some fire prevention safety tips around the 4th of July holiday in our next segment, Safety Source. Trista's annual family-friendly public safety awareness event, Trista Day, will be held on Saturday, May 19th. Starting in 2001, Trista Day is a great opportunity to educate the community on issues like seatbelt use, airbag safety, fire prevention, DWI prevention, and many other safety topics. At its heart, Trista Day has always been a fun safety education event. Trista Day, I think, is unique in that uh, we have uh, festivities for everyone of all ages, young and old, and uh, it's really about coming uh, and uh, becoming aware of the city and, and some of the things that we do and we offer, uh, as well as raising awareness about uh, public safety, not just police, but fire, EMS, and so on. We want people to have fun and be creative in the way that we promote public safety so that uh, everyone understands that it's, it's for everyone and it's important to everyone and it really does make a difference. The Excelsior Fire District wants you to be safe and we have some guidelines to share with you. Always use fireworks with close adult supervision. Never leave them in the hands of a child. Read and understand each firework direction. Keep fireworks away from children. Sparklers alone 
burn it 1200 degrees. You must make sure your child understands this before you hand them a sparkler. Never place any part of your body over a fireworks device. Approach and light from the side. Do not carry fireworks in your pocket or on your person at any time. Never aim or throw fireworks at a person, animal, building, or vehicle. Stay away from a failed fireworks device for an extended amount of time. Never relight a failed device and always soak it in water before handling. When using fireworks, use common sense, courtesy, and respect for those around you. If you have any questions or need additional information, a complete list of legal and non-legal fireworks, storage and transportation of fireworks, and safety guidelines can be obtained on the Minnesota State Fire Marshal's website at www.fire.state.mn.us or by calling 651-215-0500. Be sure not to miss America's Night Out Against Crime. The 29th Annual National Night Out, a unique crime drug prevention event sponsored by National Association of Town Watch, has been scheduled for Tuesday, August 7th. Last year's campaign involved citizens, law enforcement agencies, fire departments, civic groups, businesses, neighborhood organizations, and local officials from over 15,000 communities from all 50 states, Canadian cities, and military bases worldwide. In all, over 37 million people participated in National Night Out 2011. National Night Out is designed to heighten crime and drug prevention awareness, generate support and participation in local anti-crime programs, strengthen neighborhood spirit and police community partnerships, and send a message to criminals letting them know that neighborhoods are organized and fighting back. For more information, contact your local law enforcement agency or go to the National Night Out website at www.nationalnightout.org. I'm Kelly Murphy Rengate, and thanks for watching First Responder TV, your public safety source. If you have an idea for a segment, have an upcoming public safety or fire prevention event, please let us know. I'm Kelly Murphy Rengate with the Excelsior Fire District, giving you information to use, share, and to live by. See you next time.